hello friends welcome to c sharp intermediate to advanced tutorial now we are going to add checkboxes at uh, run time so we saw how to add the floor label so we added a floor label 1 and 2 and 3 and when we are adding you saw that we dragged and dropped the labels inside the flow layout panel container then we set the row and row span properly we also looked at where these labels should reside based on the row and column property i mean it's the cell dot row and cell dot column so there is a cell property and once you expand that cell property there is a row and column using that we specified where this floor i mean where the label should reside then we specified the row and row span so from where the span starts and how many cell it uh, i mean the row width it will grow so likewise we specified now in this video we will start coding it so we will use the form load and we will add all these checkboxes so all this stuff we saw in the previous uh, parts let me quickly go through it so that you will know how we developed this uh, sample so far So, so in the last video we talked about row and row span we also talked about the cell property and the cell property contains cell row and cell column so this will locate the control so when we created a label we specified row and column that means uh, um, there is a only one column at a design time runtime we will change that uh, but in design time there is only one column so we specified a column as zero then row as a zero for first cell then column zero row two uh, row four and column zero likewise we specified so this is how we specified for the row zero first for first label it is zero for, for the next one it is two and for the third one we specified it as four then when we specified the row span so the, the row span property is for the label control and this is cell row and cell column also for the label control so once we selected the label control the visual studio id knows that the label blanks to the table layout panel so it asked for where you want to seat this label so we specified under cell which cell this label should go after that we specified row span is a two row location zero from there the label should span two rows so that's what we specified from zero cell it will span for two rows then for the next we specified it like this two two four two the second one is how many row it will span likewise we specified it now we will go to the coding part so row count property sets maximum rows so in the design time if you see we have six rows one column that means we had only six cells so the row count property will set maximum number of rows column count property will set maximum number of columns so at runtime in the form load event we are going to set these two properties to define number of uh, cells for example if we specify row count as 3 I mean this property and column count as 5 means we are specifying 3 rows and 5 columns you see 5 column and 3 rows totally there will be 1 to 15 cells here right we defined a 15 cells so group 
style properties tells how the panel can grow when it is full so for example let us state that we defined our uh, cell size as 15 by specifying uh, three rows and five columns three rows five columns so now let's say that we started adding the control at runtime and all controls are filled let's state that we are adding checkbox or we are adding a button or radio button whatever it is so let's state that all cells are filled now if we add a new cell i mean add a new control how the layout should grow so that's what this grow style property tells us so the grow style property accepts a enumeration table layer and table layout panel grow style so that's the enumeration and that enumeration supports three constant fixed size add columns and add rows so let's state that we kept the grow style as add column so whenever the 15 cells are occupied here and when you are adding the 16th one what happens here it will add a new column so when it is adding a new column ultimately you will get three cell slots right similarly if it is add rows for the 16th row it will add one more row that means you will get five cells here and we can also use a fixed size and once you use a fixed size adding a new cell will not be allowed that means only if 15 is defined the size will be fixed 16 the cell cannot be added so in our case we are going to use this fixed size property our example use a fixed size property that means we will not allow further uh, grow of the layout so in the form load event if you see cont table is our table layout container we set the grow style property and the grow style property we are choosing it as a fixed size then we set column count as a 16 why because one column is occupied by our label and then each row we want to add 15 bits that's why we specified a column count as a 16 so in our case we will have 16 column and six rows or we can say it like this six row and 16 column so the rows are defined at a design time and the column we defined one at the design time but at run time we are changing it to 16 so column count equal to 16 next here we are forming the for loop this one is to iterate the row and this one is for column that means we are going to add our check boxes which is nothing but the bid allocation unit we can say so here at runtime if you see we are creating the checkbox new checkbox then call dot to string so here if you see the column that will vary from 1 to 15 we are changing that integer to string and we are assigning that as a text for the checkbox that means in each row you will see 1 2 3 like this so that's the use of this uh, to string and we are assigning it to the text property and that's coming from this uh, index then doc style we are setting it as fill that means inside each cell so this is the cell right the inside each cell the checkbox will get filled checkbox and its label that get filled inside each cell after that we are setting the checkbox dot auto size to true that means since we are setting auto size to true the cell may expand to fit the label as well as the checkbox the checkbox will look like this right or number first the next one 
So the auto size will take care of how much size is required for one cell. So that's why we are setting that as true. Now here our checkbox is ready. Next we are creating a event handler and if you see alert or free bit, this event handler is not yet created. We will create that in the next video. Next, uh, or we will create a dummy implementation here and actual implementation we will provide it in the next video. So, at runtime, if you see, we will be creating 6 into 16, that many number of uh, checkboxes and each checkboxes we are hooking it to the event handler. You can see check state changed, that's the event and we are providing the handler system dot new system dot event handler since this is a event handler you should follow a specific signature that we will see soon alert or free bit so that's the event handler we are passing to this uh, uh, constructor then we are adding it to the check state changed that means whenever the checkbox state changed the event is produced when user clicks any of this checkbox the event will automatically go to this alert or free bit that means here we will be having 6 into 15 I would say not 16 why because one is occupied by our floor label 15 into 6 this many number of checkboxes will produce check event and all are directed to your same event handler routine alert or free bit so finally hand table which is nothing but our uh, table layout panel can container dot controls collection so we are accessing the controls collection of our uh, table layout panel container then we are making call to add method so for the add method first we are passing our checkbox then we are specifying the column and row location so that will decide where the checkbox should go and sit so that's all so we are done with our um, form load event now let's go to the uh, visual studio and start implementing the code so here is our example we will go to the form load so we will go to the document outline view we will click on the form, then we will choose properties, event handler. So, as already explained in the code, we start adding our uh, code snippets. Next, here we will form our uh, for loops. So, auto send alert or free bid is not yet implemented. We will implement that soon. So, now it is stating that there is an error because the alert and alert or free bid is not yet implemented. So, to overcome this error, we have to provide a dummy implementation. So if you see alert or free bid, the first one is the sender, sender means uh, uh, which uh, UI is producing this event, the second one is the event talks. Now if I build this, the error will be gone and we can run this. So it may take time since it needs to create all the checkboxes. and here you can see we do created all the checkboxes and replaced it inside the cell but now if you can check the checkboxes are working all right
now in the next video when user clicks this uh, checkbox say for example here we checked it we have to handle that and uh, we will change the background color and at the same time we have one display label here right it is hidden at this moment here we will report which uh, bed is allocated that's all here in this video thank you for watching bye